again, the Kroger Grocery and Baking Company bring you transcribed Linda's First Love, the true-to-life story of a young girl, a girl in love with the world about us and in love with wealthy young Kenneth Woodruff. She is a shop girl, he a young society man. The romance is frowned upon by Linda's friends and family, and Linda faces the world with her dream of happiness alone. But you're going to hear more than this fascinating story of young love. You're going to hear how you may win an amazingly beautiful and valuable prize in the easiest way you can imagine. Every week, you have an opportunity to win one of five lovely 17-jewel Gruen Duchess model Curvex watches. Both the case and movement are curved to fit your wrist. It's the watch that leads the fashion parade. And I'll tell you how easily you may win one a little later. First, though, I'd like to tell you something about Kroger's hot-dated coffee. You'll see the date stamped on the bottom of every double-sealed bag. The date that tells you when each pound of coffee must be sold or withdrawn from sale. There's just no time for hot-dated coffee to lose its strength and its freshness. Remember, only Kroger coffees are hot-dated. And hot-dating means greater strength, a more fragrant flavor, a more delicious cup of coffee for you. Now back to Linda. Discharged from her job on a charge of stealing a dress she had worn to please Kenneth, Linda has been restored to her place by young Woodruff, who uses his mother's influence, but without her permission. If Linda's employer, Mr. Beasley, and Kenneth's mother would discover the ruse, both Daisy and Linda fear the consequences. We find the two girls in the store. Say, Linda, you look awful pale. Uh, I don't feel very well. I, I have a headache. What's the matter? You ought to feel pretty good. After all, we came within aces of being tossed out of this place until old Beasley changed his mind at the last minute. Oh, I know. We've still got our jobs. And... Oh, I'm grateful for that, but... Oh, well, I caught it again this morning from Aunt Sarah. Uh-huh. So she's jumping on you again, huh? What's biting her now? Kenneth again? Oh, no, not Kenneth so much. Aunt Sarah keeps telling me I don't deserve to have my job back again. And, oh, she's so sure that I'm going to lose it for good. And she says that if I do and can't pay my board, I can't stay at home. Linda, you know your pa wouldn't stand for that. Oh, I know that pa wouldn't want anything like that to happen to me, but... Well, Aunt Sarah... Well, I get it. Your Aunt Sarah wears the pants in the family these days. That's pretty much the story, Daisy, I'm afraid, but... I wouldn't mind that so much if it weren't for losing my job. Well, I don't think you need to be afraid of being thrown out in the street, Linda. Oh, I'm not afraid, but well, something's got to be done to keep Mr. Beasley from knowing that Mrs. Wood just really doesn't want me to get my job back. Look, well, maybe you could tell Mr. Beasley the truth. Oh, no, he'd be awfully mad. Or, or talk to Mrs. Woodruff. Oh, that would never do. She doesn't like me, I'm afraid, and she doesn't like it because Kenneth likes me. Hello? Yes, Mrs. Woodruff? Oh. Daisy, Mr. Beasley's talking to her. Yeah, the shipment came in this morning. Oh, you want it right away, huh? Oh, yeah, sure, it can be delivered. I'll have Miss Crockett bring it over. Daisy, she knows. Now, what's that? Why, no, I said Miss Crockett, and I met Miss Crockett. Oh, well, if you prefer to come and get it. All right, Mrs. Winter. Goodbye. Yep, she's wise now. But I don't think she let on to Beasley yet. But she's coming over, and she won't be so easy to stop this time. Oh, Daisy, we've got to think fast. What do we do? Well, I, I don't quite know, Linda. I guess there isn't anything we can do. Oh, Daisy, look, huh? Here comes Kenneth. Mm. Hello, Kenneth. Oh, maybe he could help. He's probably as scared as we are. Hello, Linda. Uh, oh, hello, Miss Keppel. The name is Keppelmeister, if you please. Well, Linda, back on the job, I see. Yes, Kenneth. Thanks to you. Oh, that was nothing. Nothing at all, Linda. Yeah, nothing is right. Oh, Daisy. Well, practically nothing, because the jig's up, Mr. Woodruff. Well, what do you mean by that? I mean that you're old lady. You mean uh, my mother, perhaps? How'd you recognize the description? Well, she knows Linda's back here at her old job again. Does, does she know how I fixed it? Well, maybe she does, and maybe she doesn't. But she's going to get all the dope straight from Beasley. She... Oh, your mother's coming over here, Kenneth, and... I should find out all about it. Mm-hmm. What's the matter, Mr. Woodruff? You look kind of scared about something. Oh, who, me? Scared of mother? Why, certainly not. <laughs> well, I guess maybe you just saw a ghost then. Oh, Kenneth, I don't want you to get into any trouble over me. Oh, you've done so much already. Oh, uh, don't you worry, Linda. I guess I can handle the mater all right. Oh, I know you can, but... Well, you do should be here at the store almost any minute. And, 
Oh, she'll demand to see Mr. Beasley, and once she does... The minute she shows herself in this store, Kenneth will make a dash for the nearest exit. He'll do nothing of the kind. Apparently, Miss Keppel, uh, uh, Meister, is laboring under the misapprehension that I live in mortal terror of my mother. Now, uh, listen, Linda, don't you worry your pretty little head about this matter. You have my word that when Mother comes, I'll talk to her, tell her the truth, and there'll be no trouble whatever. Oh, Kenneth, I do believe you. That guy sure was right, the one who said love was blind. Oh, Daisy, why do you say things like that? You don't understand. Why shouldn't I believe in Kenneth? He got my job back. And I'll see that you keep it, too, Linda. I'll just whisper into her ear as I did in Beasley's, and you won't have a thing to worry about. Well, Mr. Woodruff, you better get your whisper in good working order. For there's a familiar figure heaving on the horizon with all her sails flapping. Oh, Kenneth, look. What? Well, it's Mother. I I didn't expect her quite so soon. Well, start doing your stuff, big boy. We're waiting. Well, Kenneth, what are you doing here? Well, I... uh... You don't need to tell me. I can see for myself. Miss Crockett is back. Good morning, Mrs. Woodruff. I was given to understand that this young lady had been dismissed after her reprehensible behavior. Say, one more crack like that about Linda, and there's going to be some hair pulling around here, and I'm the one that's going to do it. Oh, Daisy, don't start anything, please. I'm afraid, Miss Crockett, that something has been started. And it's my firm intention to see it through to the finish. I wish to see Mr. Beasley at once. Will you tell him, please? Well, I... Oh, all right, Mrs. Woodruff. Uh, don't you do it, Linda. Uh, Mother... Well, Kenneth... Just what is the meaning of this interference on your part, if you please? Well, I uh, I want to talk about this thing with you, Mother. And take it... the girl's part, I presume. Oh. Very well, we most certainly will talk about Miss Crockett and you. But not right now. I intend first to see Mr. Beasley. I want to jump out of here. Hello, me, Mr. Beasley. Mr. Beasley, I want to see you at once. Now, Mother, aren't you being a little hasty about this? Oh, Mrs. Wicker. Uh, thank your pardon, ma'am. Be there in a jiffy. Certainly not, Kenneth. This has gone far enough. Well, well, how do you do, Mrs. Wicker? You've come after your dress goods, I presume? Well, yes. But there's something much more important on my mind, Mr. Beasley. Why, why, of course. I know just what you mean, Mrs. Wicker. Know exactly what you want. Well, I'm glad of that, Mr. Beasley. Then we need not go into any unnecessary preliminaries. That's right, Mrs. Wicker. As a man of business, I always said, get to the point. Now... It's that imported lace to match that sample you left with me that's worrying you. And you needn't worry any longer, ma'am, because just this no, morning... No, 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 Mr. Beasley, not the lace. It's about Miss Crockett here. Remember what I said about any more cracks about Linda? Miss Keppelmeister, what do you mean by speaking to Mrs. Woodruff? Miss Crockett was dismissed from your employ only a few days ago, Mr. Beasley. I hope I'm right in that assumption, at least. Why, why yes, sure, I fired her. For a very good reason, too. Then how, may I ask, does it happen that I find her back at her post? What? What? But you said, Mrs. Woodruff... Mother, you've got to let me talk to you alone, and this minute. I'll talk to you afterwards, when I finish with Mr. Beasley. No, you won't, Mother. Mr. Beasley can wait, but this can't. Come over here, please. Well, if you insist. But there's nothing can... you can say that'll influence me. Say, look here. I'll be glad to know what this is all about. Now, listen, Mother. You must listen to me. You mustn't do anything that would make Linda lose her job. Please. You misunderstand me, sir. I'm not a cold, relentless woman out to deprive a little shop girl of her job. But I am determined to protect you from a scheming little... Linda scheming? My Mother, that's a joke. Why, she's a... Why, she's as simple and naive as a child. Well, these clinging young things can exert an influence on an impressionable young man like you. I want her out of the way, where you won't see her anymore. But... uh, She's not in your social class, Kenneth. I've worried a great deal about it. Oh, Mother, listen, leave her alone. Well, if I will, will you? Well, I... Mother, it was I who got Linda's job back for her. You? But how? Well, I... I used your influence with Mr. Beasley. Why? Why, you never consulted me. How... How dare you do such a thing? Well... Now I begin to understand... Well, Mother, Linda depends upon this little job completely. And the only way she could have gotten it back was, was through your influence. Well, you know you have more authority, a bigger name than any woman in town, Mother. <laughs> you should have seen him grovel. Well, of course, that's true. But still, I don't like you pulling strings this way without my knowledge. Well... And especially in behalf of a shop girl. Kenneth, you're not infatuated with her, are you? Oh, of course not, Mother. I I just like her. She's a lot of fun, and she's 
pretty. Well, then, if that's the case, it should be easy for you to put, put her out of your mind. Never see her again. And pay more attention to girls in your own sex. Oh, but, Mother, you see, Linda... Well, Linda's crazy about me, and, and I couldn't drop her like a hot cake. If you never see the girl again, I'll see that our job is made secure. Well, well, if you'll promise me that... You'd better go, Kenneth. Leave the rest of it to me. Okay, Mother. But but don't be hard on her. I'll take care of her. Miss Crockett? Yes, Mrs. Woodford. Oh, Mrs. Wood, if I hope you're not angry with Kenneth. And you won't have me fried again, will you? I've decided to be lenient and generous with you. I shall see that your position is quite secure. Oh, Mrs. Woodruff, thank you. I, oh, I do appreciate... Now, wait a minute, child. This is a bargain. There's a condition to fulfill on your part. You are not to see my son ever again. But, but Mrs. Woodruff, not see Kenneth, why... Why, he likes me. You're mistaken regarding his affection for you. He's just told me that you mean nothing to him. Other than a girl to have a good time with. Why, I don't believe it. Kenneth loves me. I'm sorry, but you must face the facts. Kenneth has no interest in you any longer and doesn't wish to see you again. Good day. of Linda's romance with Kenneth, should she go on fighting for him or go back to the faithful Danny Grogan? That question is important because your answer to it may win you one of the five Gruen Curvex watches being given every week on this program. Yes, you may win one of these watches, and all you have to do is simply write a letter answering this question. Which of Linda's suitors would you choose and why? If you were in Linda's place... Would you be happier with the dashing Kenneth Woodruff or the steady Danny Grogan? Sit down now. Decide which you would prefer. Then write a letter telling whether you would choose Danny or Kenneth and why. This week and every week, the five best letters answering that question will each win a genuine Gruen Curvex watch. These are ladies' watches in the beautiful 17 Jewel Duchess model. Gruen Curvex watches are curved to fit the wrist. Win one of them to fit your wrist. Write your letter now. Get it in the mail before this Saturday at midnight. You can enter only one letter in each week's contest. And this week's letter must be mailed by this Saturday. But now, let's hear about the three prize blends of coffee that Kroger brings you. 